What it do, baby? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I'm Rodney. I'm Jamal. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Vance. And we are. Under, Under Construction. Construction. All right, so we're going to start off this week with our back-to-back winning season segment <laughs> because we never had what? We've never had one. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I think y'all get a little too much joy out of doing that. It's fun, it's man. Fun. It is, it's kind of fun. It is. It's kind of fun. fun. Yeah, I think. I like, especially enjoy doing the boom, yeah, boom. Yeah, I, I can like see it. that. I, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. All right, so uh, the Panthers had a... Uh, a, uh, I don't even call it a game. A preseason scrimmage. <laughs> they were scheduled. They scheduled to show yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they were late. they were they were down in Spartanburg all yeah. week. Oh. They, they didn't show up. To, they didn't show up to Charlotte on uh, Friday. Uh, they got throttled by the Buffalo Bills. Uh, what are some of your bright spots? I'm gonna give you mine off top. I'm gonna give you mine off top. The only bright spot was Christian Haynes. That was the only bright spot. The, the young man got a scholarship. Uh, from UNCC. Yeah. That is my only bright spot <laughs> hey, on Friday. Because for two seconds, I was like, <laughs> like man, who, who is Christian Haynes? Haynes? And, I, and, I, it, <laughs> and it's crazy because I'm the one who posted the article. <laughs> <laughs> who the hell is he I was like, who? Hey, like, man, he's, he's the only squad, bright spot like, because um, that, that was that was an atrocious performance by the home team on Friday. And I hope Ron lit into their asses. Um, far as the bright spot goes, the punter, I, I'm... I'm <laughs> Man, you know what's funny, man? When when we were, you know, when we were doing our subjects and what we were going to talk about, can I tell y'all something, man? I was like, what the hell am I going to say about this game? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. when there's not much you can talk about because everybody looked terrible, when I say every part of the Panthers looked terrible, maybe except like Taylor Heineke in the fourth quarter when the game really didn't matter. <laughs> I'm, I'm speechless, and it, and dude. And it's crazy because, like, we can't even answer the question as presented because Rodney is asking for bright spot, right? And there's, there's like, so, so, like, to to force myself <laughs> to answer the question, I'll go with I'll go with Cameron on his pain again. I'll go with Taylor Heineke, I guess, man. And yeah. I can't go with Tyler, T- Taylor Heineke because I didn't watch the second half because <laughs> it was that bad. It was it like I told myself the first quarter was so bad. I said, I'll watch the first half, and then I'll go figure I out the rest of my night. I quit the first night. half, man. I quit. Let me tell you how terrible that whole experience of the preseason game was. So, I had family in town, and we were watching the game. And my cousin left. He was like, I'm not watching this. I'm bored. I said, I don't blame you. I'll catch it with you. And then, so, I went to go get food. I went to, I went to my favorite nearby Bojangles. And the Bojangles was nasty. Like, they burnt the chicken. That's how terrible this experience was. I can't even have good chicken during the game. You should have went the rib man plug. I should have rib now, man. <laughs> now, this is preseason. Um, a lot of these guys won't be on the team. Right. Yeah. But there's one guy who did play who will be on the team that I think we need to talk about. And um, is, that it, is, is it a savior? That, that, uh, I don't know if we can use that word. Right? But he was taken with Carolina's third pick in the NFL draft this year um, and went 100th overall. So we let's 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 Mecklenburg County son dwell a little bit into the to Will Griff. Let me let me let me talk about Mr. Uh, will the Savior girl first, man. My answer, my 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 take might surprise y'all on on Will Greer and what I saw. Shoot for it, man. I'm not gonna overreact because Understood. because here here's the thing. Because if, if I'm being fair, if I'm being totally fair, I am real big on people not overreacting off one game or off yeah. a very small sample size. That's fair. One thing that we have to take in consideration: we played against Sean McDermott, who is the former defensive coordinator for. The Carolina Panthers. Panthers. It's not like he doesn't know everything we're going to run and everything we're going to do, okay? So, to be fair, yes, Heineke, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Will Greer and Kyle Allen both look like trash. But at the same time, man, I'm not going to overreact. Yeah, and, and that's that's completely acceptable. Um, for everybody that's listening, everybody that's watching, <clears throat> um, don't, don't think that we want to see Will Greer fail. That is definitely not the case. We mm-hmm. don't we don't want to see any any Hornet, any Panther fail in any way. I think that's that's crass and it's very disingenuous if you call yourself a fan. Right. But you call we like are is. not going to uh dismiss all of the people who call Will Greer the heir apparent to Cam Newton in the next one or two seasons as if Cam Newton Cam Newton's accomplishments doesn't kill Andrew Luck, who everybody wants. Because let's be fair about this overreacting take I just made. Because on the flip side of this, 
Cam Newton job is safe, which it is. It mm-hmm. is. Let's it let's is. be very clear about that. But it's not like it was never safe to begin it, with. Exactly. You get what I'm it's saying? It's always been yeah. safe. Right. And, and, and Grill didn't look too good last week. No. And when he played last week, I essentially told myself, it's his first game as a pro. You know, he's a little nervous. He got the butterflies. We can let this go. Uh, I was expecting him to be a little bit more comfortable this week, and he definitely took a step back. Now, so we'll so let ahead. me ask you a question. So during the season, if Cam Newton goes down, are you comfortable with our backup quarterback situation? I actually am. Um, Allen, Allen actually looked pretty good in the last two games uh, of the season last year. He and uh, he knows he knows the system pretty good now, and he actually showed me that if need be, he can actually get out the pocket and move. So, mm-hmm. um, if if these three quarterbacks are going to be the quarterbacks that we go with that back up Cam Newton. I'm okay with Allen. You know, uh, something is telling me you don't. Feel no, no, no. I, I'm. At, I had to think about it, but because I, I actually would be somewhat comfortable with Kyle Allen, only because the pieces around him would be better. He's not going to be out there playing with second string wideouts and guys trying to make the team. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. the offensive line that's a patchwork offensive line like we're seeing in the preseason. So if it's Kyle Allen and Curtis Samuel and, and DJ Moore and Greg Olson, I'm I'm pretty comfortable with Kyle Allen. So after after Friday night, there was a big cry for. Uh, Oh number yeah, I'm seven. Glad, I'm glad yeah, number seven. Going number yeah. seven. Number seven. Yeah. Number seven. Mr. Right. Kaepernick. Right. So, how would you feel if the Carolina Panthers bought him in just as a safety valve? I'm gonna. This is probably gonna piss some people off. Now, if you if you based the Colin Kaepernick situation off what we saw, uh, what was it Friday? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not even a question. He deserves. Well, he deserves a job. Don't get me wrong. He's been deserved a job. But specifically, we're talking about what we saw from the Carolina Panthers on Friday. Absolutely. You you would have to work him out based on what we saw. But at the same time, man, we got three guys competing (laughs) ultimately for a backup spot. Just Mm football-wise, where is he going to fit? That's my only thing. Now, if they were to work Colin Kaepernick out, if if, if David Tepper and Marty Hearn decided – you know what? We don't like what we see, and we're gonna work him out. I'm all for it. Yeah, I, I will. I will do my best to keep my answers strictly football. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I, I did. Trust yeah, me. it's hard to trust do, me. but I will keep it um, because I am very surprised that I've seen the uh, the contingent, the size of the contingent of uh, Panthers fans now asking for a Colin Kaepernick. It, it, it's funny how t- it's things change, immensely right? immensely funny, but it's I'm going to do my best to keep um, – Man. It will be a great football move to bring to – bring, even if you, even if Cap was the number three. Gotcha. It would be a great football move because he brings a similar skill set to, Cam. to a Cam Newton. The, I, and I mean to interrupt you, man, but just, just to kind of – kind of detail why I don't think he might not fit football wise because you drafted Will Gray and you're not going to give up on him regardless of what you see. You're just not going to give up on him. And Kyle Allen, I think they they like him enough to keep him gotcha. around. You gotcha. get what I'm well, saying? Well, and I wouldn't I wouldn't see that as a as a negative to Will Greer because right. in his defense or in the Panthers defense, Will Greer is a rookie. So and and we talked about this when Will Greer Greer got drafted. Cam Newton is only 30 years old. Right. Mm-hmm. So, best case scenario, Grill Grill isn't playing for another seven years. Right. So <laughs> that's a long time. <laughs> ooh, exactly. And so he all so like he already isn't going to play. Right. Yeah. I don't see Cam Newton leaving in two years. I don't so, see the Panthers letting him go. So basically, if this were to happen, odd man out would be Kyle Allen. Yeah. And Heineke. Yeah. And, and Heineke. Heineke's pretty yeah. odd. Yeah. And then yeah. and then move Will to the third third string and have yeah. him, and have him learn. Because him here's a question you gotta ask. Let's let's talk about all four of these quarterbacks, the three backups, and possibly uh, Colin Kaepernick. If Cam Newton goes down, who do you want, football wise? Colin Kaepernick probably today. Kyle Allen only because he knows offense. Now, if Colin Kaepernick works out and there's time involved and there's and there's familiarity with the system, Colin Kaepernick all day. Got you, got you. All right, that's what's all up. right. So we're gonna switch some gears here. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> Oh boy, this is about to get hot in here. This week, uh, Jay Z with uh, Rock Nation and uh, the NFL announced a partnership deal where he would be uh, curating the uh, halftime talent for the NFL and also the uh, social justice justice initiative. Uh, there was some backlash uh, from uh, 
everybody. Eric Reed and <laughs> everybody else involved. Uh, I'm going to start out with you, Vince. Yikes! Okay. I mean, because you've been pretty vocal this week. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have been. Uh, how do you feel about this partnership? I don't. I, I, I want your, your 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 full thoughts. Okay. So first off, I think it's an awesome thing that this happened when it happened. And what I mean by that is, had we did this podcast the day after this news was made public. <laughs> My commentary yeah, it would be different. different. It would be very different. different than what it is right now. Right. Your stance is softened a little bit. My stance is softened a little bit. <laughs> I've had some time to think about it. Um, my my initial stance has always been that when we look back on this, mm-hmm. this would be a great move, no matter what. It, it would mm-hmm. be a good one because there's going to be some good that comes out of yeah. this for, for, for the African-American community. And let's be real, that's the community who's – who's uh, been felt or touched most by this most recent move. It's pandering by the NFL. I don't think anybody on both sides can argue against that. Oh, yeah. Okay, I can't make but it. Oh, yeah. The, the, I, well, the frustration is coming in, at least for me and a lot of other people that I've seen that agree with my position, is that Colin Kaepernick, <clears throat> when he started the protest, he started the conversation in regards to – the uh, the systematic oppression that African Americans face in this country, and a sub conversation of that initial conversation was the NFL and how they relate to African Americans and other minorities. Mm-hmm. In the three years since the NFL has made two moves, the most recent one with Jay Z, and two years ago they uh, partnered, you know, for lack of better words, with the Players Coalition Mm -hmm. led by Malcolm Jenkins and at one point Eric Reid. They're making all of these moves in the name of social justice while ignoring the guy who started the movement. And that's where a lot of frustration is coming in at. I think with with Jay-Z, I know that he's supposed to be majority owner of an NFL team. I know it's possible that he may bring Colin Kaepernick in. Mm-hmm. But I think the frustration is is that he did not have the conversation with Colin Whether And he does not have to. He is not obligated to talk to Colin Kaepernick. But because of everything that has transpired in the last three years, mm-hmm. I think if he gives him that gentleman's <clears throat> phone call, I don't think we're having this conversation the way that we're having it now. <clears throat> and I'll make one more point before I let Jamal go. For the last two years or so, most fans have been saying Colin Kaepernick will never play another NFL game. Mm-hmm. He will never play another down. He needs to give it up, focus on his activism, and congratulations on initiating the movement. And now with the new signing, that whole he's not going to play anymore kind of ha- has things. now turned into, well, what if Jay-Z brings him in? So 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 how do you go from he what he's not gonna play ever again to now he possibly may play? Right. In my opinion, that comes off as very dismissive and it comes off to me that you really don't care about the movement, you just want your football. Okay. What about you, Jamal? You stole like ninety percent <laughs> of my thunder, man. But <clears throat> I, And I got a lot more. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm gonna make a statement, but of course y'all let me explain my position. here's my opening statement when it comes to this subject. Everyone involved in this is full of shit until Colin Kaepernick gets a job in the NFL. That's how I feel about this entire situation. So let me ask you a question. So now I will expound, but okay. Yeah. Let me. So this is this is this is my thinking. No, this is just my thinking. So the initial the initial kneeling was to bring light to social justice issues faced by African Americans. It seems like some of this devolved into okay, we're gonna sit out until Cal and Kaepernick get, gets a job. Right. And initially, to me, it feels like there was okay, I'm doing this, but where were, where was your end goal? Right. Like what what, what was what your was plan? Right. What was the end game in the plan? Right. So what do you think about that? Speaking of that, because what I was getting to was the the initial meeting with Jay Z and Roger Goodell. God, I hate Roger Goodell. Um, we all do. You know, <clears throat> Jay-Z was, was – was, one of his statements was, is, it's time to stop. And so many – I'm not quoting We're this past exactly. Kneeling. We're past healing and it's time, time for too. action. However, Jay-Z never laid down a plan of action. Not not to say he doesn't have one. We just didn't hear it in his initial statement. 
Uh, Jay Z also mentioned Roger Goodell. This was not about me. It, you know, he's saying if you think this is about me performing at performing at halftime of Super Bowl, then you got the wrong idea. Mm -hmm. So Jay Z, in so many words, said all the right things. It sounds good, but I say this a lot, man. Optics matter. Mm -hmm. Optics matter a lot, and so far the optics are very bad on this. Because what we know is Colin Kaepernick was not contacted. What we do know is that we don't see a plan yet. And what we know is that there's rumors of Jay-Z po having possible ownership in the NFL. Now, does, 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 does this change if Jay-Z somehow owns a team and signs Colin Kaepernick? Is all forgiven? Possibly. But we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. So that's why I come to this conclusion. Because let me, let me say this first. When this first came out, me personally, I was kind of all over the place. Yeah. I really didn't know what to think. I'm, I'm being honest. I, I, I really, because there wasn't, there wasn't enough information mm -hmm. for me to come to a conclusion. But from what I do know, as I stand right now, everyone is full of shit until Colin Kaepernick <laughs> gets a job. Okay, That's um, why I opened it up with that headline. Rodney, um, the question that you just asked Jamal, mm -hmm. um, if you can, ask that question again. So it was it was something about, you know, the people stopped watching football. You know, what was that? So, like, that like, so like so like it's like, OK, we were upset because the NFL basically blackballed Colin Kaepernick, which it's not a basically they blackballed him yeah, 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 because yeah. basically he stood up for the initiative of African-Americans. Basically, uh, they're consistent disenfranchisement so it's just kind of, to me it kind of seems like okay what's the end goal are we are we well, are we sitting out because he doesn't have a job any longer or is the nfl because i mean at the end of the day the nfl is not they don't make policies yeah and and see that that's that's one of the narratives that <clears throat> that has been created in response to mm -hmm. all of this Colin Kaepernick's initial protest wasn't to challenge the NFL to go out and do more for African American um, communities. His pro he was protesting the the way that the government and this country and this society treats African Americans. We stopped watching the NFL because the NFL effectively blackballed Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. So. I don't think there was an end, there, there was an end game because it was obviously an emotional response because mm -hmm. I didn't watch it for that first season and then I've slowly come back to it and now that we're doing this podcast I'm kind of obligated to kind of keep yeah. up with football now so I'm actually constantly at conflict eternally because of it but the people stopped watching football because the NFL said hey you know what you're 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 stirring the pot you're 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 messing up our money we we're gonna push you out gotcha. so it was more so an act of solidarity with Colin Kaepernick and I think that's why I think that's what makes this Jay-Z move so much more complex because Jay-Z stood in solidarity with Colin Kaepernick right I will not perform at the Super Bowl right. and then he went you know then he had the song lyrics and the song yeah. shit that we we're already in the Super Bowl and all that good stuff and then you go back and you 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 have a deal with the people who just blackball right. your homeboy. Who's gonna make him a lot of money? So let me ask some extra question. So does Reed and Kaepernick taking to me kind of like some hush money? I mean, because I mean, to <laughs> be honest, you, I, to be honest with you, uh, for the NFL to even offer them a settlement right. shows that there was something that was bigger. And they didn't want it to be well, exposed. No, and I think to I, me, to the, me, that's the, just to me. In my opinion, my bad, Jamal. No, um, in my opinion, the settlement money had nothing to do with the protest. The settlement money was hey, and and officially, this mm -hmm. will never be the case. But effectively, it was it was the NFL admitting that we blackballed you because of your protest, and we're gonna get these are this is the money that we're gonna give you for for your lost earnings. And all that good stuff. But then also to me though, for them to acknowledge that we blackballed you and here's the money, there had to be some type of evidence. And for you to take that money, that means okay, the evidence is not coming. And out. for the record, I didn't agree with them settling. Right. I gotcha. didn't agree right. with them. So, however, that's a lot of money. Turned out. But anyway, 
<laughs> but 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 let but let me let me say this. Let let me let me kind of paint the picture of how this looks from the NFL perspective and from Roger Goodell's perspective. Mm-hmm. I, this is just my belief. The the picture that they paint to me is, hey guys, we got this real hip black hip hop artist. It's all love and respect to show you that we're doing something for black people in a community. Meanwhile, we just we want everybody to just not pay attention to what the real issue is and what what Colin Kaepernick was really standing for. So we get we get it both ways. We got our we got our 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 black figurehead to to, to kind of show that we care, quote unquote. Meanwhile, Colin Kaepernick still's not playing, still not stirring the pot. We got Eric Reed to shut up, so we're good. And that's how it looks. And yeah. to me, when people say it's chestnut checkers, so far, looks like Jay-Z's the one getting played and not really playing chestnut checkers. So, again, going back to this whole optics thing, the optics don't look good. And it looks like somebody's getting played in this, and it's not Roger Goodell. And gotcha. then, and then if, if. Jay Z is somehow, some way able to use his leverage to get Colin Kaepernick back in the league. We will still not get to the root of his protest because those same people who just two months ago were saying that Colin Kaepernick would never play again, they will now be saying, "Hey, look, Colin Kaepernick is playing. Now you guys can shut the hell up." Right now, it's everything's cool now. Yeah, it's all, yeah it's, everything. Hey, good. You, hey, you got Jay Z rapping and putting all his input in the NFL. You got your guy back, so everything's and, cool. And so, Eric- so let me ask you a question. So, I'm gonna take it back. So, say you guys are Roger Goodell. And this is 2016, and Colin Kaepernick is kneeling. What, in your opinion, what would have been, would have been the, the the most ideal response to that? And what course of action would you have taken personally if you were in Roger Goodell in the NFL shoes? Simply put, to focus on the why he's kneeling and not the action he's doing, because the the narrative was made that by him kneeling during the anthem, mm-hmm. he was protest, he was disrespecting the flag and those who, who served in the military. And that that's not it. It's a narrative created to avoid having the actual conversation. So the proper response would have been Roger Goodell bringing him mm-hmm. in. Hey, what do you? what is it that you want? And if they had some sort of pragmatic conversation, we're not even having this conversation mm-hmm. right now. And it gets back to my earlier point. It, even even after even after the NFL have partnered with Jay Z as well as the NFL co- the Players Coalition, if they bring Ka- Kaepernick in right now for some sort of talk, we're not having this conversation. Right, you? right. You, you know what people forget about Colin Kaepernick Kaepernick kneeling that first year. You know what people always forget. He actually played that year, y'all. Yeah. He actually he actually played for the 49ers that year and. You know, the NFL didn't really bring too much attention to it, and I'm not going to say it was all good, but it wasn't the big controversy it was when he stopped playing. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But to to answer your question, I, I hate to kind of piggyback off what Vince said, but you had to have a conversation. And specifically, if you wanted to make a big stick out of it and, and kind of put, bring it to the forefront of your audience – why not have this conversation on, on on a televised event to show that you actually give a damn for one? Like mm-hmm. like like hear Colin Kaepernick's point of view. Have a mediator. Have a real conversation instead of trying to trying to shovel it to the side and, and hopefully it just goes away. That's just not the right way to handle it. But at the same time, from Roger Goodell's point of view, he's got to make these bigot owners happy. You get what I'm saying? Those owners are the ones that make him money. And he never tried to find the balance of trying to make them happy and also try to get to the root cause of what why Colin Kaepernick was protesting. Okay, so what do you say to people who say, let's keep sp- politics out of sports? It's unavoidable. That's you bullshit. Can't. You can't. You, you can't. can't. And and it goes back to something that I said earlier. Like, okay, okay, when, when people say let's keep politics out of sports, not well, let's relate it to the Colin Kaepernick issue. Um He's he's advocating for the advancement of African Americans and other minorities who've been oppressed in this country. That's not politics. That's what do you, what did you say last humanity. week? Humanity. It's right. humanity. Right. So when 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 people say keep politics out of sports, they're 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 simply they're basically saying that they don't want to talk about it. Or they're saying you're not talking my politics, so it's invaluable to me. So. Let's keep what you have to say out of sports. That could be it as well. And then also, like, but people are hiding behind 
politics. Remember that whole conversation we had about gang mentality? It kind of relates to yeah. this. You get what I'm saying? And then also, like, politics are in sports are just intertwined. Like, they are. And it's and been so, happening from the beginning of sports, man. And, and so, so, like, I hate to say this, but our owner is about to go talk to politicians about getting a brand new billion, two, three billion dollar arena. Which makes it even more unavoidable. Unavoidable. So, uh, anything you want to close with uh, with the Colin Ka- Kaepernick situation? Everybody's full of shit until Colin Kaepernick <laughs> gets a job. Oh, the end. I, I'm I'm not gonna be as blunt as Jamal. Um, the only thing I'll, I'll ask people on both sides. Um, I know we all disagree, but I've seen a lot of people who have supported Jay Z in this situation take a lot of shots at the others who haven't, and they've come up with all these ugly scenarios. And these false parallels to kind of justify Jay Z's actions. Stop. Right. Stop. Right. Right. Because you're 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 showing you're showing your ignorance. Because no matter what happens, everybody on both sides will have to eat crow in some type of way. In some type of way. Because I look, I I have been pretty blunt, but at the same time, I also acknowledge that because there's so much we don't know yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, yeah. we have to let everything. So you know, so we gonna be a Jehovah Witness. <laughs> We're going, to, we're going to pass on that, so, uh, <laughs> pass on that, and, on that and, question. And again, I'll, I'll end it with this. Jay, I'm, Jay I'm glad that we're having this conversation days after because if we did this immediately oh, man, after. Man, you, I, you was unhinged. I, it was, it, but it is funny that you say that because even then, I was keeping a cap on how I really and how I truly feel. Vince, I, I read you, man. <laughs> I, feel, I feel your chakras. <laughs> Oh man, moving on, moving, moving on. on. So uh, we're going to talk about our lovable losers in the segment that we call the tenth pick. Yeah, buddy. Because we always seem to pick there around yeah. that area. Yeah, buddy. So uh, the NBA last week released the uh, schedule. Uh, the Hornets uh, opened up the season against the Chicago Bulls on the twenty uh, third, uh-huh. and then our hometown boy, uh, Clems- uh not Clemson, uh, Kimball Walker. Clemson's on my mind. Who's going to win another national championship? A oh, um, hometown guy, Kimber Walker, is uh, scheduled to come back on November the seventh uh, in the ESPN televised game. And then I, uh, but prior to that, Lambo is coming on November the fifth. Uh, so, what do you guys feel about the schedule? Uh, any games you're excited about? <laughs> Any uh, of the twenty dollar uh, lower level seats you, you you're anticipating? Hey Vince, you want to go first? You know, okay. So <laughs> I, I I went to Raleigh this weekend. I went to Raleigh this weekend. Why? Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, wait, long story. I may even put it in my shout outs. I don't know yet. But I go I go get something to eat, and there was this group of guys who obviously wasn't from the area. So we get to talk, and you know I went and said what's up to them, and. I, I told them I was from Charlotte. So they was like, oh, oh, can you hook us up with some Hornets tickets? Because I was telling them about under construction. <laughs> and I, I told them to go follow the page. And they were like, yo, you think you can hook, hook us up with some Hornets tickets? I say, look, man, I know quite a few people in the Hornets uh, organization that do sell tickets. But uh, for the next three years, you will not have any <laughs> You don't need a hookup. <laughs> you don't need a hookup. You hook don't up. need no hookup. You probably get a free ticket. <laughs> just, just walk up to the just, arena. Just ask around. <laughs> just, All you got to do, ask it, around. You're not going to have a problem, man. And, and, and we didn't exchange contact information, but we're both probably going to end up going to the same game. And I'm going to recognize him from the other side of the court, and I'm going to be able to yell his name. <laughs> What's out. up? And we're going to have a conversation the entire time that the game is going on. But to answer your question, um, I really think, I think sometimes the NBA knows how the fan bases feel going into the season, and I think they play into that narrative. Yeah. And what I mean by that is the, the, the fan base is already frustrated. We're already upset because we lost Kimba. Uh, we predicted to win 20 games or less. And then in the very first month of the basketball brutal, season, brutal. we play the Lakers, Clippers, the Rockets. Clippers, the doggone Kings, who could go either way, and then we close out the Golden road trip State. by playing Golden State. Man, look, look. Hey, man, um, <laughs> ain't no hope starting now. Man, man, we ain't hey, but let me tell y'all while I'm happy about that. I'm going to tell y'all while I'm happy about that. Get it over with, man. Get it over with, man. Get it over with, man. From, with, with that being said, from February on, 
it's a pretty light schedule. That's why that's it, why I say I like the It is a pretty beginning. light schedule. Yeah. And I'll say one more thing before I let Jamal go. Um, I know we all I know the fan base cares a lot about the uh MLK games. Yeah. We did get that game this year. Hey, I love that. We did, we got the that. MLK game. We're playing home. Now, you guys know that I just mentioned that the NBA loves playing these games, right? I'm gonna give you guys a few chances. A few games. Who do you guys think we're playing on MLK Day? Celtics. No, no, not the Celtics. MLK, what you got, Ronnie? MLK Day. Uh, it's gonna LeBron. be East. It's, it's the East Coast. It's, it's East Coast. East team. Hmm. Philadelphia. Nope. Man. Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> Orlando. Awesome. Orlando, awesome, right? Awesome, awesome. Absolutely great. This, this is not coincidence. It, it no, it's not. This is not it coincidence. Be, it can't be. It's not. It's not. It's not. The NBA. <laughs> don't let, man, listen. So, so, Jamal, what games are you looking forward to? <laughs> <laughs> I, I gave my first game Wednesday, April 15th against Philadelphia. Is that the one you looked at? <laughs> All right, man. The bleeding will be over. <laughs> It's the last game of the year. Oh, man. But, but let me say this, man. Every time the NBA schedule comes out, I look for a couple of different things. Um, I look to see if there's a game on my birthday. I look to see, see. if there is a Atlanta game on a Saturday because I, I actually love going to Atlanta okay. when the Hornets play the Hawks. And neither, well, there's a game on my birthday, but it's not here. We actually play the Knicks on my birthday in New York. Hey, man, on the construction trip to New York. <laughs> That'll be lit. Anytime, bro. <laughs> and let me tell you where, I, I, and this is not really a big, big deal because we're going to suck, but I, I, I'm going to tell you where the, the, the scheduling gods dropped the ball. A couple of years ago, this was so fun, man. A couple of years ago, the uh, the the Bobcats played the Hawks on a Saturday, mm-hmm. and the Panthers played the Falcons on a Sunday. Oh, so Charlotte Crew was like, you know, let's make a weekend. Like, I, I and it was one of the most fun times I've ever had. Now, ironically, we play the Falcons uh, here, but the Hornets play the Hawks in Atlanta. It's like a missed opportunity, man. Like it could have been another weekend like that. This would have been really yeah, dope, yeah, man. Yeah, no so those are things to look for. Other than that, man, no, I'm not excited uh, by any uh, game, man. Uh, well, I'm, I'm excited about a few. Let me, let me, let me give it to you. Let, well, let me, you. you know, I got to talk about this. Y'all know I got to talk about this. Uh-oh. November seventh. What's happening on November seventh? Kimba. Man, I'm, no, I, I won't be there. I will not be there. You going, Rodney? I won't be there. Uh, I can't to do be it. On, to be honest with you, I, I would probably if I'm here New Christmas Eve. Well, New Year's Eve, I'll probably go to that one. Okay. Over over this one. Look, and you know what? I'm gonna go. And here's here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna I, I'll let you guys create the narrative. The reason why I wanna go is I'm gonna go to a few games before that Boston game, and I'm gonna take pictures of the arena. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go to the Boston game and I'm gonna take pictures of the arena. And then I'm gonna go to the game after the Boston game, and I'm gonna take pictures of the arena. And then I'm gonna tag a few folks on social media. Well, uh, honestly, I wouldn't do that. Why say that? Because on Saturday, November the 9th, oh boy, we play Zion, and that's the game I'm excited about. So don't 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 do that immediately. Now with the with the Hornets fan base, do no, you no, no, think but, Zion carries that much weight. On Zion me? is from, Zion. from South Carolina. Yeah. You, and we he went to do, and we went to do. Okay, and I, then and, and then on top of that, I mean, the next home game is 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 a uh, John ja Morant. Okay, he's from South Carolina as well. Okay, well let me. Let so you got to wave another couple let, of games. Yeah, let me clarify. <laughs> so, no, those are the two games yeah, I'm excited yeah, about too. So 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 basically, what I'm trying to do is basically show how the fan base shows up depending on who we're playing. So well, the, the whole month, the whole month of March, April, just take pictures. But listen. <laughs> So, so, here, so, so I, I don't know if you're going to get to this or not. If not, we're going to do it a little early. So nationally televised games, we got like what three, right? Something got, like that. We got well, we, really one, really well, one, we really one. Because NBA TV doesn't, doesn't really count, count. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, get one. so let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all why this sucks even more. So a lot of people don't know this, man. But when ESPN and national TV decides what televised games are going to do, now it a lot of it depends on star power. That mm-hmm. yeah. that's obvious. But another component a lot of people don't realize is that they base it on attendance. Of course, that would be the one game. damn game we have because they know Hornets fans ain't going to show up for any other game 
but that one. No, no. Lakers, <laughs> Clippers. I mean, okay. Other than other than that, for the most part, yeah, they know they're gonna get a guaranteed crowd for that game. They're gonna be, in game. They're gonna be you know what I mean, and another, that's why I can't go, man. A, another game we're gonna show up for probably is to, to, to see Kobe White in yeah. Chicago. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're gonna move on. Uh, oh, thank God. No, I'm sorry. really. This <laughs> is sore subject, man. All right, Jamal. Uh, <laughs> another. Uh, you got me frazzled, man. Sorry. So we're gonna move on to. Uh, uh, Tara Rozier. Uh, so there was an article uh, written uh, just kind of giving the backstory of how he landed in Charlotte. And uh, it provided another opportunity to take a dump on Michael Jordan. <laughs> so, Jamal, I'm starting off with you. What was your thoughts on the Terry Rozier article? Well, you know, beforehand, man, I, I've made mention of how I thought Terry Rozier was a, a, a necessary signing for the Hornets after the, the Kimber Walker debacle. And I, and I maintain that. I, we, you know, it, it, the, the way that we got Terry Rozier, it reeked of desperation, but I'm not really so mad at that. Because, mm-hmm. again, man, that to me, it was a dire situation at, the, at point guard. Yeah. We needed to do something. So, in regards to the article, the article mentions the fact that Michael Jordan called Mitch Kupchak and said, hey, man, you need to do whatever you can to go get this guy. It's not like he was wrong. You get what I'm saying? It's just the fact that, I love this word, optics. Yeah. It just looks bad when the Kimber Walker thing went down, even though Kimber Walker himself said, I understand why it didn't work out, but that's another story. But the optics look bad because, number one, people who don't want Michael Jordan – in charge, so to speak, yeah. for making decisions. He obviously made a call, and we got Terry Rozier as a result. A lot of people think we overpaid for him. That's another story that I won't get into today. But it's a wait and see. It's a wait and see, man. At the end of the day, any Hornets fan should want Terry Rozier to ball out. I want him to ball out because I'm sick and tired of Michael Jordan is the grand wizard and everything is his <laughs> fault narrative. But yeah, so let's just wait and see. Um, that. Jamal, I mean, Vince, what do you think about the, the, the crap taking we taking on Michael right now, man? Um, I, I, I was a little depressed. I was a little depressed. And reason being, obviously, the fan base, you know, craps on Michael Jordan a lot because apparently, you know, he, he meddles too much. And for the last three to five years, we have staunchly defended Mike that he hasn't had his hands in anything because the last concrete – evidence that we've had was the Frank Kaminsky trade. Mm. And after Frank after Frank was was drafted, and, and I and I said trade, but I meant Draft. drafted. Yeah. After Frank Kaminsky was was uh drafted, uh reports came out that Michael Jordan had said that he was gonna take a step back and he was gonna let the front office do what the front office do and he was just gonna sign checks. And so when <laughs> the Rosier article came out, you know, everyone that has said that, you know, Michael Jordan needs to be more active into the uh, fan base. And everyone gets upset that when all these moves are being made, Michael Jordan is out somewhere smoking a cigar and all that good stuff. It gives credence to his critics because mm-hmm. now they can say, see, Michael Jordan is the reason why we suck. Michael Jordan is the reason why we can't win. Every bad thing that has happened is because of Michael Jordan. And... I don't know, man. I, 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 let, I let me let me punch a hole in that real quick because when the Kimmel Walker thing was going down, apparently he was distant. He wasn't there. So which one do you want, and, man? And that's, you get what I'm saying? And, which which one do fans? And that's want? the hypocrisy. <laughs> that's the hypocrisy in the fan base. No matter what happens, it's always a negative response. Mm-hmm. He he hasn't been involved enough. So let me ask you a question: Do you think MJ warrants any criticism at all, or? Or, no, or, 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 no, or, or, or is there was an overboard team? No, and, 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 and see, it, it's hard to answer that question mm-hmm. because the reason why Michael Jordan gets so much criticism, and we've said this time after time again, is because he's Michael Jordan. Right. Yeah. He's the, like, like if you were to ask anybody who criticizes Michael Jordan, ask them to name ten NBA owners they right can't. now. They can't. They can't name them. And so it's hard for me, it's hard for me to say he warrants criticism because New York is a shit show. 
Sacramento is a shit show. Minnesota. Phoenix is probably the biggest shit show right now, but you don't ever hear anything you don't hear about their owners. Their owners. Right, right. You hear them referred to as the front office needs to get it together because it's understood that the owners just signed the checks. And my, my the, the, the leg that I've stood on throughout this whole MJ debate is mm-hmm. there, there's just so much that goes into running an NBA franchise, yeah. and you just don't know all the moving parts. So – of course, it makes the narrative easier just to blame one guy. You get what I'm saying? We All four of us are very well-versed when it comes to NBA basketball. But all four of us don't know everything that goes on in the franchise. Yeah. So, But we're smart enough to say we don't know everything. Yeah. You get and, what I'm saying? So we're just not going to make some lazy narrative and say, man, this is his fault. And small, every, every franchise operates differently. Differently, yeah. right. You got some NBA owners who never come to the games, they never interact with the players, all they literally do sign is sign the checks. You got some You got some NBA owners who they might come to the games, um, um, they might interact with the players, but they, they don't have any say-so in the day-to-day operations. They sign checks. But then you got some owners uh, on the other end of the spectrum, like Jerry Jones. Right. In addition to signing the checks, He's doing interviews. He Out does the press conferences. He has he he has say so and who comes in and all like he so like we don't know to what scope that Michael Jordan is operating within the Horn, within the Hornets organization. So I just I and then it's 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 gonna suck because let's say the Rosier thing works out. Let's mm-hmm. say Rosier comes here and he balls out. We might not win too many games, but let's say he justifies his contract. Everyone will get credit except, except Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan, right? All right, so that's that's we got you. I I just I just had one more thing to to say about uh the the, the Terry Ro- Rozier thing, man, and and the, the, with, with Rozier, like like I, like Vince kind of already said, if he balls out, you know who's gonna get the credit? But at the same time, could you imagine what would have happened if Michael Jordan didn't make that phone call to Mitch Kupchak? What what happened? Ooh. What kind of situation would we be in at point guard if Whoa. Michael doesn't call? Well, some people would, would 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 think that hey, we we're gonna sign this guy with the mid level ex- with, with the mid level uh, exception exception, and he was gonna come here automatically, and this was this, and this he's more efficient than Rozier, and this and this, but that's that that was not a guarantee, right? Free agents make their own decisions. You can't just say hey. I'm Michael Jordan. You're you, going to sign here. You know, I, I, we're going to wrap this up because I feel like we're going on a tangent. But let me say this one thing. I personally thought Ricky Rubio was a mid-level exception guy. <laughs> okay? He got 50 million. Y'all see what kind of contract he got with Phoenix. What if – who do you prefer? Terry Rozier or Ricky Rubio? Rozier. Younger. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> All right. So, uh, last week, the NCAA made an amendment to the Rich Paul uh, rule. Uh, Vince, you're, you're very vocal, and me, you have the same beliefs about the NCAA. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with you, brother. Okay, okay. What do you think of this correction of the rule? Uh, one, it was it was an admittance of fault uh, by the NCAA. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, to kind of take this in a way that nobody's probably thinking right now, I want to give a shout out to social media. Because... It did it did feel like it worked for once? I, I think I think man. social media might have played a small hey, part. Man, there's a heavy hand named LeBron behind there yeah, too. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, so yeah. like, if if this happens in the 1960s, I think this rule stays here because yeah. they don't see or hear the outrage. Right. Without social media, I don't think this happens. But I'm gonna read a quote from Rich Paul, and I'm pretty much just gonna leave it at that. Okay. So he did a he did an op-ed piece for um, the Atlantic. And basically, he said that requiring a four-year degree accomplishes only one thing, systematically excluding those who come from a world where college is unrealistic. Does anyone really believe a four-year degree is what separates an ethical person from a con artist? He then later went on and said, let's be clear that once the NCAA requires a four-year degree for athletes testing the waters, it's only a matter of time before the idea is socialized no longer question, and then more broadly apply. We all know we all know how this works. Unfair policy is introduced incrementally so people accept it because it only affects a small group. Oh boy. Then and the, what is, the unfair policy quietly evolves into institutional policy. 
I'm not sure what the technical term is for that, but I didn't finish college, but I know it when I see it. Mm-mm. Fire. Straight fire. I'm Mic just, drop. I'm just, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna just leave it at that. Hey man, that 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 rule to me was just was it was a rich Paul rule, but it was a stop future rich Pauls. Yeah, 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 yeah. At the end of the day, the NCAA is making money off these kids and they don't want them empowered. Now, here's what sucks about this. This narrative didn't come out until a few days after the uh I know the what rich you're about Paul to say. Rule. It wasn't the NCAA who came up with this rule, mm-hmm. reportedly or allegedly, whichever word goes there. Who was it, Vince? It was an NCAA committee. 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 Yep. And I honestly haven't heard that term in two years. I thought they did away with it because when I initially heard of it, I I, I didn't like it. Right. I didn't like it. Um. But it seems as if the blame is being placed on the committee. The committee didn't come up with the rule. They suggested it. And then the NCAA was like, we appreciate your services. <laughs> and then they came up with all these crazy rules. So Condoleezza Rice, who is a former secretary. Uh, you guys are supposed to say politician because we're mixing uh-huh. it in with sports. Is Ooh. the one who who led the charge on coming up with this Rich Paul rule. Wow. And her of all people. Well, well, she wasn't the person. She she's actually she's the head. On the NCAA committee. It's her. And it's, she, you the head. It's you. But here's the worst part about it. There are former pro Players. athletes on this committee. And I don't have the names. I wow. don't have the details. So if I said something wrong, I'll go ahead and apologize. But when you go look at who's on that committee, to see them initiate this this right here, it it, it, it hurts. So Yeah. So th- you, you kind of stole what I was about to say, but... To, to kind of delve into detail, like the thing is, I I guess what what makes me feel better, <laughs> for lack of a better term, is we don't know how the vote went. That's the mm. only thing I have to stand yeah. on because hearing that there were African Americans on this panel is highly disappointing. Because I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. It kind of erases the the notion of systematic racism oppression whatever you want to call it but at the same time it's like well where do you go with this because yeah there were black people on the yeah. committee so to speak without knowing much you get what i'm saying yeah. so but at the end of the day the ncaa did the right thing they, they had a ton of egg on their face and it is finally it i, I cannot express how happy i am to finally see social media work in yeah. a positive way and let me say this to wrap it up. I'm I'm not I don't want to push the narrative that we are happy with what the NCAA did mm-hmm. in regards to 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 taking away the requirement that you need a four year degree. They need to eradicate all those rules altogether. Yeah. Because if we accept that they take away the four year degree requirement, they'll get comfortable. Then we go back to the quote that Rich Paul put out earlier: "Is that with those other requirements, so they're the still and incrementally implementing their rules." Right. Got gotcha. you. All right. So we're going to segue to our culture segment. Uh, some troubling things happened within the city of Charlotte this week. That's an uh, understatement. It seems like it's a normal occurrence. Yeah, right. Uh, our city leaders, uh, 100% African-American, received some disturbing letters uh, from somebody in the populace. Uh, basically saying troubling things like, going to talk tie you and, and things like that. And, and, and basically calling out black Democrats and stuff like that. Uh, just going to give some background. Uh, the mayor of Charlotte is African-American. The city manager is African-American. Police the the uh, DA, police chief, head of the school board, uh, fire chief, and also... Uh, Our NBA owner. Uh, NBA. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just, just all of them are African-American. And we're in a world where changing demographics are scaring people. And it's... it's, 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 it's we, we we lived in a world where eight eight nine years eight nine ten years ago, President Obama was elected and racism went away, <laughs> and so it's it's and to, our quarterback to, said racism didn't exist anymore. Oh, that was the the advisors that I own yeah. on the uh, sign to him. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what do you guys feel about this, All man? Right, Jamal, you take this one. Gosh, I <laughs> I find it 
very, very ironic that the mayor and the city council who pushed so hard for the RNC to be here on 2020 you my boy, Jamal. are receiving these hateful messages coming from the right, quote unquote. I hate saying that because I, I've said time and time again, when we talk about Republicans versus Democrats, it's almost never a productive conversation mm-hmm. because people miss the big picture when you frame a conversation as Republicans versus Democrats. Now, it is necessary to frame it this way because this these particular letters that were going to these council members are Democrats. Yeah. And it and it was and the, the, the language in these letters were clearly Republican versus Democrat Democrat. But to anybody who is sensible, to anybody who has some common sense, it was obviously racially charged language yeah. against black mayor, black police chief, black D.A., mostly uh, uh, people of color, black superintendent in our things. city council. I don't want to say I'm happy it happened. I, I don't want to say it that way. But at the same time, if that doesn't wake up the people involved in this, I don't know what does. I don't know what would make them second guess being so accommodating to the RNC with this particular administration come here in 2020. I hope they wake up and realize the 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 Pandora's box that you may have just opened. I'm gonna keep it at that. Um, um, I really don't know how to word how I'm feeling, so so bear with me, okay? Think through it, but because <laughs> we don't need the the last the last couple of years we've had uh, two possibly three um, high high profile shootings here mm-hmm. in Charlotte that um, kind of ignited the racial conversation. Uh, we've opted to allow the RNC come to come here next year. We uh, and and even then, um, when he had a rally, when our current commander in chief had a rally in Greenville, you know he made disparaging uh, remarks. The city actually took a vote on whether or not to pull out of their agreement, and they still agreed to allow him and his constituents to come in 2020. Now. In their defense, they were advised by legal counsel, it will do you more good to harm than allow them to come because you guys have already agreed to do so. So I will put that that caveat out there. But as African-Americans, as as minorities, as women, as anybody in any oppressed group, we have always been told to get out there and vote for people who look like you and share your interests because when they are voted in office, they, they, look will, out for you. they will look out for you. That has not been the case here in Charlotte. That has not been the case here in Charlotte from, from my mayor or from our police chief. So when I read that they received threatening letters, Obviously, I don't want any harm to come to me. Right, right. I don't want Let's any harm to come to me. very clear about that. I want yeah. no harm to come to anybody, no matter what your beliefs are, no matter what side of the fence you stand on. But I told myself, in some way, see, you've been, you, you, you've been, you've been, help me out, Jamal. What's the right word I'm looking accommodating. for? Accommodating. You've been accommodating for them the entire time in the name of democracy, and they are still hitting you with the attacks. Mm hmm. You 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 have a accom- you have accommodated at the expense of your supporters' well being, mental as well as physical. Because I know a lot of people who are leaving Charlotte during the uh, 2020 RNC because they just don't want to get caught up in anything. So at the at the expense of your supporters, have you accommodated for the other side, and you are still getting this type of stuff? So. Mm. I hope it's some sort of eye opener. Um, I don't want to say this was karma even in itself out, but hey, you 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 accommodate it and they still hate you. My drop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna move to shout yeah, out. Right. <laughs> so There's nothing uh, to add. Yeah, I don't I, I don't I don't want no smoke in response to that, but um, that, that was I'll take prob- all the smoke. Personally. That was that was probably as as political as I can answer that. Yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> all right, so I got two shout outs. I'm going to shout out Painting with a Twist. Had an excellent time. Check it out. It's in Ballantine, not Ballantine, but uh, South Park area. 
Have fun. Uh, my second shout out is to LeBron James. Shout out to you, man. You are more than an athlete. Uh, just read some of the backstory. You a rich power relationship. You kept it real, man. Um, most basketball players out here putting their friends on, spending money. Nah, man. You 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 had your friend learn under agents, become an agent, empower him, and you're empowering others. You're more than an athlete. Shout out to you, LeBron. I, let me let me say something to LeBron James real quick. Like I can't wait for him to retire for basketball reasons. Let me be very clear. <laughs> I hate him because he kills the Hornets. But for every reason you just said, he is so necessary for the culture, for for all the reasons you said, man. I mean, just like one of the – probably maybe the best ambassador for the NBA we've ever yeah. had. Yeah. Yeah. So um, my shout-out would be pretty personal. Uh, the last couple of months, I've been trying to get into wholesaling, which mm-hmm. is another form of investing in real estate. And in the process, I've met quite a few people who are in the business who – are willing to share their experiences and to give knowledge and assistance and all that good stuff. In the world of uh, real estate investing, you really don't see that too much. So I just want to give a shout out to everybody that's just that's been trying to help me along that path these uh, last couple of months. So I haven't had a negative shout out in a long time, <laughs> and I'm overdue. I'm, I'm overdue for one. So my I ain't I ain't gonna call it a shout out. My middle finger for this week goes to Warren Sapp. Oh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. You POS. You Ooh. fat POS. I, when I tell you, listen, man, there was a re- I, He made me realize how much I used to hate the Tampa Bay Bucks. <laughs> and the thing is, we haven't really hated the Bucks because they've been so irrelevant the last decade. But the last time they were, he made me realize how much I used to hate those dudes, man. Yeah. I, I don't understand how you could be so far removed from the NFL for this long, but still have so much flat out hatred. I, it is nothing else. You see them comments flat about Cam out Newton a few months? Hatred. Not only for Cam Newton, but for your but for your your former I, not teammate, but whatever. Because I don't think he played with Jeremy McCoy. No, no, no. But before before a guy that was on your former team. And you talk about about. I don't even have enough to say. Okay, two, I, two things. One, I I think that eventually, I think our shout out section is going to end up becoming a uh, uh, quote unquote, a, a a donkey of the day type thing. Because because when we first started this podcast, it was hey, I want to shout out X Y Z. Boom, that was it. But as this podcast has grown, we started to like expand on the who and the why and put the feeling into Again, it. Again, we were overdue. With Skip Bayless. With that, oh <laughs> man, exactly right. Let's set the tone. But listen, getting to the Warren Sapp comments in regards to Gerald McCoy, I actually agree. Stop. I agree. Now listen, Gerald McCoy did a lot of good on the field for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They failed him. They did. I will agree with that. They failed him. I went for the butt. But what did they accomplish? They didn't accomplish anything. It wasn't Jeremy McCoy's fault. I get it. I I, I completely. He raised hell against us, man. And, yeah. and, I, and I get that. But, but but we're we're wanting to retire a jersey that is attached to no team accomplishments. But it's not I, 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 I feel like I feel like the team should have done something before we can say we cannot give your jersey to somebody okay else. okay okay so so the year is 20 so the year is 2030 and the horns say Kimba, we want to retire your jersey we nope. didn't do anything no nope. oh, you must be crazy vince you have lost your mind no nope. there needs to be because here's the deal kimba is top one two or three greatest one of all time and we could go in that conversation later if you retire Kimball Walker's jersey, you got to retire Dale Curry. You got to retire Alonzo Mourning. You got to retire. You got to retire LJ. Nope. You got to retire. No, no, no. But look, no, 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 I agree no, with no. Dale Curry. No, no, no. I agree with you with no, Dale Curry. Just Dale. Just no, Dale. But here's the deal: the way that you guys are saying no, there's a huge contingent of fans that would say yes. That's why we need a standard. They're wrong too. Even with as great as they were. We have never been beyond the second round of the NBA playoffs. Warren Sapp. You need some sort of accomplishment. Warren Sapp, this is my message to you. Go, Did- find, go find you a lady of the night like you usually do. 
Release some of that stress. And and and, and leave and go it. Go away. And go away. <laughs> As always, guys, we appreciate <laughs> right. you watching and listening and subscribing and liking and commenting and all that good stuff. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And, and also continue to watch. We got a dope segment with Elise. Uh, from uh, was the, the conversation, conversation LD and Milky Balls coming soon. Right, so y'all. keep in tune. See y'all next time. Peace out, y'all. Ship it in and ship it out. Peace <laughs> out. <laughs>